I stand before you today as the proud author of SB 796. And my 10 plus years here in the legislature, I don't think it's going to be a more impactful bill that I can be involved with uh, in recognizing the impact that this will have on not just one particular African American family, but it's going to set an example of what reparations should and could look like, not here, not only here in California, but in the nation as a whole. Yesterday, we had our first reparations task force that I'm honored to serve on, and I thank our pro tem for appointing me to this task force. For those of you who don't know, in 2000, I mean, I'm sorry, in 1912, an African-American couple by the name of Charles and Willa Bruce bought a piece of land in Manhattan Beach. They bought it with the intentions of living out their American dream of owning a business, but also adhering to those rules that existed at that time, separate but equal. They started a resort, a bathhouse, a dance hall, a restaurant to cater to the African American population. And from the day that business was established, it was successful. But that success infuriated many of the individuals in the surrounding areas. More importantly, their white neighbors. And the Bruce family, as well as the other six families who acquired land along Manhattan Beach, were harassed continuously, not only by the KKK, but law enforcement. They had their tires slashed. They had their facilities burned, their houses set afire. But despite all of this, the Bruce's and those neighbors remain consistent. It shouldn't be lost on us that just the day before yesterday, we recognized the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa massacre. And many folks says, well, what's the similarity between what happened in Tulsa and what happened in Manhattan Beach? The difference is no one lost their lives in Manhattan Beach, but they did murder the dream of African-American families who believed in doing the right thing. As I stated, they purchased this property in 1912 for $1,225. And again, they were harassed constantly. And in 1924, when the Klan could not finally run the Bruce's off and the other six cities, uh, six families, the city of Manhattan Beach took it upon themselves to use something that we're all familiar with, eminent domain, to take their property. And as we've seen also in what's called the Black Wall Street in Tulsa, they use eminent domain after burning down that town to prevent those communities from rebuilding. They took this property in 2000, I mean 1924, and finally removed them from their land in 1929, never to build a park. The lands sat vacant until 1948. At that time, it was transferred to the state of California. In 1995, the state of California deeded the land to the county of Los Angeles. And from there, they built a lifeguard training session, uh, uh, station. This bill simply begins the transfer of returning this property to the rightful owners. And I want to thank the courage of Supervisor Janice Hahn and the four other amazing women on LA County Supervisors that had the courage to do the right thing and help correct this horrible wrong that happened here in California. When I introduced this bill, the people asked, was it unique? And as we've seen, this is not unique. There's hundreds, if not thousands of stories like this. This is just one where it's still, this land, other than the lifeguard station, still sits as it was in 1929 when they raised the facilities from that property. This bill will not provide justice, but it is a small measure to return and recognize the wrong of this family. We eliminated generational wealth from this family and the surrounding folks who lived on this land. This bill is a model of what economic justice should look like in this country. This bill 
will not erase, as I stated, those horrible acts, but it represents a restorative justice and a clear step in the right direction. And I respectfully ask for your high vote. Thank you, Madam President members. I want to thank the author for bringing this forward. And it's a very, very important act. And I wonder how many more. We know that there were many more incidences, perhaps not as, as obvious as Bruce's Beach, but we know there were many other incidences where African Americans' land or property, facilities, businesses were taken or they were driven out. And in this particular instance, we will never know the extent of generational wealth that may have resulted from the long-term operation of Bruce's Beach, not only for the Bruce family, but for all their employees, all of whom, of course, no longer had jobs once Manhattan Beach took the property. And when we think about the, the difference between the wealth of an average African American in our country and the wealth of an average white person, you know, why do many of us have that wealth? And I'm talking now about myself as a white person. We have it because our families were able to retain their businesses, retain their properties, own their homes, their, and those things increased in value. And for me, for example, I was able to put my daughter through college by refining my house. If I had been unable to own a house, and we know that, you know, not that many years ago, with covenants and redlining and other practices, a black family couldn't own the house, then of course that completely impacted their generational wealth. I was struck while I had known about the Tulsa massacre, I was struck in the, with recently with the amount of media attention, the 60 Minutes uh, special on it, and then my own Congresswoman Barbara Lee going and talking about the, the just horrific events there and how it was completely buried from the public and that even black residents of Tulsa did not know that circumstance happened. Now, back to Bruce's Beach. This is one opportunity to correct a wrong in California. We, I look forward to having many more, and I really appreciate my colleague from Gardena bringing it forward to us. Thank you, Senator Skinner. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to briefly say thank you to the author for bringing this forward. Um, my brother actually happens to live in Manhattan Beach and, and actually said that if this did not move forward, he would be moving out because he does d certainly believe in, in ensuring that um, our that our African American friends and community members have the ability to have um, this sort of correction to what was an egregious and awful. Um, issue that had happened to them. And so I wholeheartedly support this effort and I hope that as we move forward as a state in looking for additional um, reparations for our African American community that we can find opportunities to correct the wrongs from the past. And so for that I urge an I vote. Thank you, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Madam Chair, members. Uh, I rise in support and I want to just say that um, as a person who has property and it's been generational in our family. In my family, many of you know, homesteaded here in California. And eminent domain is something that is um, used as a tool for the good of the public. That's what we're, we're supposed to be able to build roads and schools, things that are good for all the public. In this case, it wasn't good for all the public. It was good for an opportunity to move an agenda. And that's wrong. That's not what public, that's not what eminent domain was set for. And I want to share that, you know, this country's done a lot of things that are not right. And it's very difficult to fix those wrongs because a lot of things have happened in the course of history that don't really always allow us the ability to be able to do that. In this case, we have an opportunity to do the right thing. We have an opportunity to wrong a right where Somebody's land, which I guarantee you, and, and, and being a person of color owning land in that time is not like it is today. So for me personally, as a landowner and somebody who uh, respects that land and, and knows what it is to tend to it and run a business and how difficult that is, 
this is a super great opportunity for us to give back that local control, which the state, this bill does nothing but give the control back to the locals to make the right decision. Even though we've heard the history on this piece of legis on this piece of land and what happened to those folks. So I strongly support this piece of legislation. I will share that maybe it might not be that in the future because this is a circumstance where we can do something that is absolutely right. So I encourage an I vote on SB 796 and thank the author for bringing it forward. Thank you, Senator Dolly. Senator Allen. I just want to also add my voice and support for this bill. Um, obviously, and to clarify a little bit for my, our friend from Orange County, um, moving forward, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the strictures of the Coastal Act and the Coastal Commission, uh, their work will, will certainly uh, not, be, not be infringed upon. Um, I, I also, I just want to say that this bill also points out the importance of courageous, incisive journalism. And the Los Angeles Times and a number of other, uh, uh, you know, uh, journalists and, and, and newspapers and journalistic outlets that um, were able to amplify this important story, research it, and come up with a very compelling narrative to help illustrate and, and shed light on some of the incredible injustices of the past. It's not that this was not a story that wasn't known by folks, but just like with the Tulsa massacre, that you know, uh, was something that people knew about, and yet it really wasn't something that got, had gotten picked up uh, you know, by, by uh, mainstream media and by journalists and our textbooks. This is a similar situation. We've got uh, some, some reporters who really stepped up and produced some incredible uh, research. And I just, I recommend, and if anyone wants to learn more about this issue, to go read the LA Times articles about this, uh, about this story. And it's a distressing story. It's a story uh, that unfortunately is all too common in American history. And it's something we're going to rectify through this bill by authorizing the county to, uh, to, to, to transfer this land. So with that, I respectfully ask for my vote. Thank you, Senator Allen. Senator Stern. Thank you, Madam President. I rise a proud co-author of this measure, and I thought it'd be worth just clarifying for the members voting on this that the location also of this property is not directly on the beach. The strand runs along Manhattan Beach there, uh, but public access is already maintained. Um, the issue is that we've got, a, got an injustice embedded in our law here and a, and a theft of property that dates back decades um, that needs to be rectified. My only concern is with, at the city council level, if Manhattan Beach imposes undue restrictions on the Bruce family's resumption of their private property interests, we're gonna have issues. Um, so I'm hoping with the passages of this legislation and all your voices here, that we have a expedited process for getting this work done, but that we don't just stop with this work. The Freedom Surf Camp is literally a block away from this site. And right now they serve kids in Manhattan Beach, but not a few miles inland. Um, and right now the LA County lifeguards are going through junior guards and 4,000 kids across LA are going to become junior guards. Those are mostly white kids. Uh, the culture around the beach itself and sharing these resources has to change. And I hope that uh, the Center from Gardena's legislation is just a step in that direction to a much broader commitment um, that this is for everybody. All right, thank you. 